In this video, I'm going to introduce you to some basics of accessibility for web design. And what I mean by accessibility is designing web pages for people who need some sort of assistance in having a commensurate experience using the web. And we're going to be doing this uh, by thinking about it in terms of something that we call access first design. Excuse me. And with access first design, we think about and code for accessibility as we are designing the page and not as an afterthought. Cannot spell afterthought. Yikes. Afterthought. And not as an afterthought. And this is of vital importance. Too many designers, even today, still don't think about accessibility when they are designing for the web. That includes for users who are blind or have some sort of visual impairment, users who are deaf or have some hearing impairment, those who have motor function impairments, some those who have cognitive impairments. Uh, anybody who has difficulties accessing the web or experiencing the web in one way or another. And because we are working on coding, we are going to be focusing on issues with accessibility for those who are primarily have vision, vision impairments or who are blind. Um, if we were doing video work, we'd be talking about captions and, and so on. Uh, but since we're primarily, since we're working on coding for the web, um, we're going to be thinking about accessibility for those who are blind or have vision impairments. Um, and we are going to do that as we begin this class early on, so that it becomes second nature for you to think about it as you are designing your pages and not as an afterthought. Now this can be something that as simple as um, thinking about you know, the fact that 10% of the male population is red-green colorblind. So how would your web page look if all of your fonts were red or green? How would it look to those individuals, some of whom might be your boss one day or on the hiring committees? And instead of a red and green web page, they see a puke green and brown, right? Something that you haven't designed for. Um, 7.3 million people in this country are blind who have some sort of vision impairment. How are they going to access or experience your web page in a commensurate way with a sighted user if they can't see the images that you have in your portfolio, for example? And there are two parts uh, that we're going to be thinking about for today. And as we talked about last time in our last video, to code for an image, we use img src equals, uh, that's where the file name goes. Then we have our alt, we have a title, and then we have our height and width. Oops, I wrote add in there. This is our main skeleton code for an image. And today we're going to be talking about alt text and the title text. Now, this is an image, uh, I'm sorry, this is an, uh, an issue that is very dear to me um, because when I was in getting my PhD, I had a professor who was a pioneer in this field. Um, and his name was uh, John Slayton. That's not him. <laughs> uh, John Slayton. And he was one of the pioneers in creating an accessible web. Um, this is his book, 
unfortunately, I don't have, I don't have a photo of him handy to show you. Um, but back in, even in the early 2000s, when I was getting my PhD, uh, this was uh, something that was on people's minds, especially those who were blind, as he was. Um, and he describes alt text in this way. <clears throat> Excuse me. The alt text is generally a phrase or short sentence that forms the content of the alt attribute. This apparently simple idea has great power. Missing or inadequate alt text can make your website completely unusable for people with disabilities, such as blindness, low vision, and cognitive disabilities caused by traumatic brain injury or learning disabilities. By the same token, writing effective alt text can pro provide a significantly better experience, not only for people with these disabilities, but also for just about everyone who visits your site. This is because the process of writing alt text will lead you to clarify both the purpose of each element on page, on each page, and the organization of the elements in relation to one another. So what does this mean in practice? You know, he's emphatic about the importance of this uh, alt text. And remember, the idea is to create an experience that is commensurate as that of a sighted user. So we have these two attributes, the alt text and the title text, in our coding image code skeleton that will help us with this process. The alt text is a description of the image. And the title is additional information that helps contextualize the image or content, as we'll see, because this title tag can be used in links, which we'll touch on briefly. Now, the question becomes, how detailed does your description have to be? Does it have to be one sentence? Can it be a word? Can it, or does it have to be significantly longer? And the length is based on your goals for the image. And I always err on more rather than less description. Because when we are viewing an image, we see the whole image. If you are a sighted person, I say we being a sighted person like myself. I see this whole image, and I would want my users who are not sighted to be able to have a commensurate viewing experience. Each part of that image is very important. Um, so I try to add more description rather than less description. And the title is very much what it sounds like, it could just be the title of the image, and it provides additional information that helps you contextualize what is not seen in the image itself, but might be important for us to understand what it is. So let me give you an example. On my website, you can see we have these, this picture, and I've added another one below, which we'll get to. This is a photograph of me. All right, I'm holding the camera, got my hood up, and so on. We see the whole, the whole image here. So I can give you an example of my alt text and my title text. So here is my alt text up at the top. The alt text is right here. Title. A square color portrait of Bill Wolf in a blue windbreaker with his hood up, 
over a weathered baseball cap. He is smiling and holding a Canon AE-1 camera, which is attached to a red and black strap hanging around his neck. The straps of a backpack can be seen. In the background is a blue sky with hazy white clouds. I could have added that there was a fence in there and maybe some of this railing. I probably should have added that. I could have also added that the jacket was zippered. All right now that I'm looking at it. In a zippered blue windbreaker with a zut up. Now, some people might say I could just say portrait of Bill Wolf, and that would be fine with them. But that was not that is not fine with me because portrait of Bill Wolf does not give the person who is looking at this or experiencing this picture um, with a screen reader a commensurate experience. And that is how sighted viewers, uh, un uh, people with um, difficulties with their sight, experience the web is through a screen reader, um, where things on the screen are read aloud to them. And when we meet in, as a full class again one day, I will show you how that works and we'll do a little assignment with it. Now, the title text for that image would be Bill Wolf at Light at the Lighthouse at Point Reyes National Seashore in 2016, photo by Wendy Sturtz. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is additional information because it provides the location of the image and the date and the photographer, which is always nice to give credit. This information, the Lighthouse at Point Reyes National Seashore, is not in the description because we do not see that in the photograph. We do not know that this is at a lighthouse. Maybe we can assume because of this business over on the side, um, but we, we cannot assume that it is. But that provides me, or the, or the person who is using a screen reader with an additional bit of information that will help them understand the, what they're, the photograph that is on, this, on the page that they can't see. And we take this text and we put it in the alt space. And it takes up a lot of space, and that is okay. And then we grab the title text and we pop it in the title area. So our, our code for our image takes up much more space than it was before. And when this image comes, uh, someone who is using a screen reader comes to this image in the code, it will read out loud this entire description. And then it will read out loud this description as well. And that's what screen readers do. And by reading this description, it is working towards giving the person with a visual impairment, a commensurate experience of those who are sighted. I'll give you another example. Uh, here is another photograph. Let me uh, change the resolution here so you can see it a little better. Okay, taken on the same day actually. We've got a point race thing going on here. This is the photograph, black and white photograph that I took of that lighthouse. In, the other, in this picture, I am standing down here, I believe. So let's take a look at the alt text for that. Okay, a black and white photograph in portrait mode of a lighthouse, light Housekeeper's house and shed perched on the edge of a rocky outpost. They are in the lower left corner of the photo with a huge expanse of water extending to the horizon where it vanishes into what looks like mist or fog. A staircase leads from the lower left to the lighthouse and the rocks appear to be covered in a low lying, low lying, low lying foliage. And that is a description of that image. 
Could we have gotten even more detail? Yes. Is that necessary for the purposes that I have right here putting on my website? Probably not. I might have described a little bit how the, <clears throat> the water is sort of rolling waves in it. That could be important. Um, and maybe I will go back and add that in. I could have put that the, the White House, I should have put that the White House is white um, and the, you know, the wet shed and the other building are, are all white. I should put that in there. This is, this kind of description is important, especially if you're, you're putting on an online portfolio and part of that portfolio has photographs and you want people with visual impairments to be able to experience your photographs as well or your graphics or whatever you're designing and you're putting up online. You want them to be able to experience it. Now for the title, it is Point Reyes Lighthouse, August 2016 by Bill Wolf, Canon AE-1, Canon 28mm 1.2, 1 to 2.8 lens, and Fuji Acros 100. Okay. So here I'm providing some technical details about the photograph, which I think are important. And if I'm putting a, if this is a photo, uh, photograph portfolio or a photograph website that I'm building, and I want, then that information would be important. It, and it's, it's all information that is, that would be on the site. And I want that to be there with it. And it should be there with it. Now I'll put that. In here. And so now we have two images with alt text in here. And I will save it and I will upload it to the web. My images are already uploaded, so I don't have to do anything else. And I'll go back to my page and I'll refresh. And you'll see that nothing has changed. Um, now, you did see that little flash. Uh, that's the alt text behind the scenes. Now, some browsers, when you hover over the image, will give you the title of the image. That's there, that title text. Some browsers do that. Some browsers don't. This Firefox does. Okay. So that's pretty. That's that's one thing that. So if you are hovering over and you see that you'll see that uh, the title text there. Now this is all very important to do, like I said, for accessibility purposes. Now there's one other piece of accessibility um, that I want to talk to you about, and that is linking. I'm going to link to my portfolio page. Links also have title tags. And just like the image, it provides a little bit of a, a little bit of in additional information for those who are using a screen reader. And for our purposes right here, it doesn't have to be all that detailed. If, if it's pretty self-explanatory. Now, one thing that we want to never ever do when we are working with links, okay, when we're thinking about links, links and title text, I'm gonna pop this up like this. Links. Never use, click here, or read more. more or similar. Some people will tell you it's okay. With access first design and if we're looking for a commensurate experience, we never do that. And one of the reasons is is because when people use screen readers, there is an option where that individual can bring up just a list of links on a page with the idea of scrolling down to look for the links, which is how people who are sighted 
also you look on pages, especially pages that have been there before, they'll just scroll exactly to where they need to go and click on it. And we might see click here and be able to do that. But if someone is using a screen reader and there are like 17 click here links, what they hear from the screen reader is, is this. Click here, 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 click here. And it's totally, absolutely, utterly meaningless. Now, some people will say, well, they have put the title text in there, that's fine. But then they're gonna hear, then they'll hear, click here, blah, 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 click here, blah, 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 click here, title, click here, title text, click here, title text. Rather than making somebody go through that, which is excruciating, because it takes a lot of time, just make the link part of the sentence. Okay. And have it be done with. Now, if you want to add additional text, you could. I could just say portfolio, and I can say Bill's photography portfolio that adds a little bit more to it. Um, depending on the link that you have, there will be more information that you can add to your title. But you must have these title tags in your links, okay? Just as you must have alt text and title text in your images, you must have titles in your links. And so for your next assignment, uh, your homework is going to be to compose alt text and title text for the image or images that you've added to your page so far, and compose add title text uh, to your portfolio uh, that you've created so far, okay? Uh, to your link, I'm sorry, your link that you've created so far your links that you've created so far. Um, and so that's a very, very basic uh, introduction to accessibility. Uh, as we talk about it in, in class, as we meet as a full class, we'll get into some further detail. <clears throat> but when we're thinking about access first design, as I mentioned in the beginning, accessibility becomes part of the design process. It becomes part of your thought process as you're going through. And I always want you to go back and think about you know, how will somebody with some sort of impairment be able to understand and have, I'm sorry, have a commensurate experience with my site each step of the way. And so um, good luck in incorporating this into your page. And, oh, I should add one last thing. This is part of what we are calling human-centered design this semester. Um, human-centered design, which is one of the course objectives. So when you're thinking about, for your story of learning, what you've been learning about human-centered design, uh, the accessibility is part of that because we're thinking about those as we are going through the design process. Okay. So good luck. I look forward to seeing your alt text. I'll be looking at it um, at, at the, in our meetings and your title text as well. And if you have questions, as always, please let me know. Have a wonderful day.